Now let's look at the first example problem for this topic. This is a problem on cathodes. It's called a baloney. So there are n balloons floating, and they are lined up from left to right, uh, each at a particular height. Uh, and uh, the height is uh, upper bounded by 10 to the 6. Uh, so you can think, so yeah, so let's actually look at this. So this is this is a illustration of the uh, sample test data. We have five balloons and um, uh, each of them are at a particular height. So the goal is to pop all of them by shooting arrows at the chosen height. So each arrow will go from left to right. It will stay at the particular height until it hits a balloon. So when an arrow hits a balloon, that balloon pops. But the arrow will will drop one um, will drop one position and then uh, keep going at that height. So the question is uh, to ask what is the minimum number of arrow that is uh, uh, that is needed. So let's look at this uh, this uh, example um, for this input the output is three so we have five balloons at the height of four five two one four so these are the five balloons uh, at the height of four five two one four so we need um, uh, three arrows to pop out of them so this arrow go here it will pop this one and then it will, after popping this one, it will drop uh, height by one, so it will be traveling at height four, and then it will pop this uh, balloon. And this arrow, arrow number one, will pop this uh, balloon, and then it drop its height, and then it will keep going, and it will not hit uh, any other balloon. And this arrow will pop this balloon. After pop it, it will drop a height by one, and then it will pop this balloon, and then it's gone. So these three arrow, uh, is sufficient to pop all three balloons, and there is no way to pop the balloons using two or fewer arrows. Um, so yeah, so encourage you to pause the video and uh, think about how you would solve this problem. Okay, so how would we do it? Um, Let's first ignore the efficiency consideration. Uh, let's just uh, just see how we can solve it, uh, even if uh, it may not be uh, the most efficient way. So we scan for the from left to right for the balloons, right? First, we saw a balloon at height four. Then we know we will need an arrow, right? So once we have the arrow, we can simulate this arrow. We know we have to have arrow one in order to pop this balloon. There's no other way. After arrow one pop this balloon, it will drop to the height, and then we can scan through the the, uh, the rest of the balloons and see whether this arrow will pop any other. So it will not. So so after this is done, then we look at the next one, next balloon that has not been popped, and that is this balloon. And then we have to have use another arrow. We pop this and this arrow drop a height and then we scan through all the balloons and um, when we see the fifth balloon we realize to pop that one and then th we are done. So at this point um, these three balloons are popped then we we'll keep looking the next balloon remains is this one we need an arrow to pop this three and uh, pop this two and then we're done. Um, so these algorithm will work and but what is the complexity? So the worst case complexity is uh, uh, n times h. So if we have n balloons and the highest, uh, um, no, it's, it's n squared. So this algorithm, the complexity is uh, not dependent on the height. It only depends on n. Because uh, on the worst case, we may need to use the n arrows, and then we are simulating uh, the trajectory of uh, n arrows, and each of them is uh, sort of linear in n. So at least the first the balloon, it will take uh, scan through n balloon, and then n minus one, and so on. But it's still quadratic. Um, so how do we speed this up? Uh, how do we avoid uh, tra scanning through these balloons uh, again and again? 
the key idea is to simulate, uh, to try to simulate all of the arrow at the same time. So, for example, we look at this, uh, look at the first balloon, we know we need an arrow at this height. Um, and after we pop this balloon, we, we have an arrow traveling at height 3. And then we look at the next, uh, the next balloon, it's at height 5. So, but we don't have any arrow traveling at height 5. So therefore, we need to create the second arrow. So at this point, well, the second arrow at uh, uh, height 5 will pop this and drop to uh, height 4. So at this point, we have two arrow traveling at height 4 and height 3. And then we look at the next, um, the next uh, uh, balloon, it it's at height 2. We don't have any arrow traveling at that, so we have to introduce a third arrow. So, and this arrow will pop this balloon and then drop to height 1. So at this point, after popping this balloon, we have three arrows at the height of 1, height 3, and 4. So then we look at the next one, the, uh, we have a balloon at the height 1, so because we have an arrow at height 1, so we can pop that balloon, and then that arrow drop to the, uh, drop to the ground. So we have an arrow traveling at the height 3 and 4, and the next arrow is popped. And in fact, after the next arrow, we have three arrows traveling at height 3 but we are done, we don't need them anymore. So we need to keep track of the state of um, all the arrows that are traveling. And, and we can make this work because um, um, we can make this work by using a histogram of uh, counting the number of arrows that are traveling at each height. So to representing the state of we have an arrow at the height 1, arrow at height 3, and arrow at height 4, um, we can use a histogram uh, remembering that. And note that it is possible to have um, multiple arrows traveling at the height. So for example, if we have um, another balloon here at height 5, so we will need another uh, arrow, then we will have two arrows traveling at height 4 and maybe uh, we have uh, uh, two more arrows at height 4, then those two arrows can uh, pop the, the two of them. So, uh, so, so the, the point is there may be multiple arrows at a particular height. So to, we have to encode that state. And we can do that by using a histogram. So yeah, so this slide essentially go over the argument I just taught. So we can do a brute force, which will be quadratic time. So we want to simulate multiple errors at the same time, and we use the histogram. So the main concept I want to illustrate through this problem is a, a histogram, using histogram to keep track of state. And this is a Java code for this uh, problem. So we have uh, the, the histogram here is uh, represented by A. Uh, it, so, because the maximum height is uh, one million, so this uh, this will uh, this array uh, index goes to one million and one. So, after reading in the data, uh, we scan from left to right, look at the height of each balloon. So, this uh, HP stands for height of balloon. So, we look at how many arrows are traveling at that height. If the number is zero, then we have to introduce a new arrow. So, answer plus one, and then that balloon is popped then this arrow's height drop by one, so we have, uh, 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 we increment by one the, the height minus one, uh, so that the, the, the number of arrows at, uh, at the current height minus one. So if uh, we, ha we already have one or more arrows traveling at that height, then uh, one arrow will pop that balloon, that arrow will drop one height, so to represent that we need to um, subtract one from the number of ba uh, balloon at the current height, and then add one to the next one. Now, an interesting question is, what if, so this approach works because the input parameter says hi is less than or equal to 10 to the 6. If, however, the constraint is hi is less than or equal to 10 to the 9, how do we solve that? So if you don't know the solution, you should uh, pause and think about that. So, even though there, the height may be up to 10 to the 9, because we only have 10 to the 6 arrows, so only some of the height will have arrow traveling. So we don't really need to have uh, this array with one element for every height. 
we can sort of use a more compact representation of this histogram, and that can be done using uh, a map, which will map every height uh, that actually have balloon traveling to an integer of uh, the number of a balloon uh, traveling at that height.